goat is out doing cartwheels like somebody gave it sugar. I guess it just dumped my ass, thank God. <laughs> get some more shares out before I get out of here. So much stuff to do. It's absolutely ridiculous, as usual. Story of my life. Check it out. Thrift store, $7 down camo vest. <laughs> so I went to the thrift store and found a bunch of stuff. Yeah. It's going to come in handy where I'm going. Be cool old where I am going. All right. All right, I don't know what this is about, but we're gonna we're gonna read it. It's titled "I Tell You the Truth." It's monkey business. Tell you what? It's monkey business. I apologize ahead of time that my share is so lengthy. It needs to be together with my conclusions of years of experiences. Happy day, Steve. Hope this hope this note, sorry book, finds you and your family in good health. Steve, I quote your words. The devil himself owns mainstream media today. At the end of this short story, you'll see how this is the very truth. Your video dated April 30th, 2021, minute 80, 1818. As you're ranting, rant one, you said something of biblical proportion, Steve. Quote, this is going to be the only way for the people to find out the truth is people talking, end quote. It seems you are quoting the truth. So, then belief comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Unfortunately, the education system has been teaching generations not to believe. This is ingrained very deep. The only way they will believe, and even that is not guaranteed, is if they run into a forest dweller face to face. They need to be shocked out of the programming. Our enemy fully knows that the weakest human who stays and continues in the truth is more, is, is more than a match for all the human and subnatural beings of death, and if he reveals himself openly to who he really is, he would be met and resisted. You have been repeating this very thing that the truth is our only freedom. Rant 2. If we could trace it back to the original sack of dung who started this, I actually prefer the word shit. <laughs> I propose that we had I propose that we have a written document of who started this. It was Cain. He was the first human, the origin sack of he killed his brother because of jealousy, so this hate in humanity is almost 6,000 years old now. He posted video July 23rd, 2021, minute 257 to 341. My most recent experience, then my very first encounter, followed by my observations over 60 years. I'm sorry, this is so long. I could cut it in three, but it would break the flow. This called me Mr. Nobody, and I'm not sharing my name publicly for now. Please keep my email address private. I actually keep everybody's email address private, but you got it. My testimony is very different from what I've been listening to. Since I've been following you, Steve, I've had the freedom to hear the testimonies of humans around the world. From your lips to my ear. I hesitated to send this letter to you because of the hundreds of events I heard you read, and so far not one was like mine. Unless I missed a few, I'm still hesitant. But your courage strengthened me to share my testimony. When your intro said, human-like. They aren't human. We must be able to differentiate between the entities we deal with. There's the difference between the black bear and the brown bear, the gigantic Kodiak, or even the polar bear. Each one of these beasts have different abilities as predators, just like they do. This is how we are kept in the dark, by not knowing the difference, but if you can distinguish between species, you're in control of your life. If they're like that, then they are human, to be precise, ancient, isolated humans whose territories, homes, are now being destroyed by a very invasive species, city dwellers, who must have a lot of toilet paper so they kill the forests. They were not seen because there was a lot more territory until the cities started to destroy themselves. And now the citizens want the giant's homeland. The mountains were and still is their home. And now people fleeing from the cities start building their city homes on their land. It is as much their land as it is the land of all the indigenous peoples because they have been dwelling there as are any other native peoples who are relocated by the gene side gen side they are very intelligent and can see the dark future if you saw this as your future what would you do there's a reason why they hide themselves from the cities 
I will shed light on this in my comments. First, let me say I find it very brave of you to do this. The people who have lived through such events certainly need the truth, for that is the only thing that will set you free from fear. Many, for many years, I experienced the presence of these entities every time I was in nature, in many places around the world. The point is, not the locations, but the sixth sense. Currently, I live in Florida. I smell them and sense them in many local reserves, which we visit frequently. This element of smelling them reminds me of a simple natural occurrence with all canines. The most amazing animal behavior most people overlook is when introduced to new creatures. These canines go and sniff your butt and front parts wide. This, is, this event is a year or so old. I had an interesting experience while I was living in Tennessee. My family enjoys nature and we always find parks and isolated places in nature to release, escape the tensions of city life. As we stepped out of the parked car, we started our walk to our left with the forest on our left and the river on our right. I am, weir <coughs> I am, weary, of I am weary of wildlife in a protective way. As I surveyed the area, I would keep my left eye on my son and my right eye on my wife. I would scan every bush and shrub around us, all around us all. Snakes, silkworms, spiders, ticks, ants, birds, and other elements of nature that may be offended by our presence. I noticed that the gentle river, now an estimated 20 foot wide rock boulder creek, about 18 feet below where we were standing, has a dark side. As I scanned up the trees from where I was standing, the leaves and branches were all covered with river current flow debris in a straight line, eye level, with me. And I'm now, and I am now only 5'11 tall. As I surveyed the foliage from the right down to the left in the direction of the flow, it was a very pronounced line of debris hanging off the lower branches of all the trees. So if there is rain and the river swells and flash flood occurs, we would be carried away by the torrent. As a ponder this event, I also noticed huge trees completely broken down, large two to three foot diameter by 20 to 100 feet long. What caught my eye was the formation of trees in three locations. One by the location we were, and two others behind us up the embankment. As I turned around, one was on my left at 10 o'clock, and the other was on my right at 2 o'clock. Now what made it weird for me is the formations were made of large, long trees. And they were in positions that reminded me of one of my favorite games as a child, pickup sticks. But in almost the shape of a teepee. Now there some of these trees could not possibly just fall on the others, because some of them were shoved purposely into positions impossible for us Lilliputans little pushins <laughs> to do. And this was way above the waterline. As I pondered these thoughts, I turned back to look at my wife and son. As I turned to my right to check on them, I had a, felt a very clear burning on the back of my head. I was fully aware of someone staring at me. My sixth sense can identify the difference between danger and stare. A large variety of other emotions. I had experienced this event frequently in my life and I was ready. I responded by emitting a low-level frequency. I know you're there. What do you need? Can I get you something? As suddenly as this appeared, it was now silent. And no burning feeling in the back of my head. As my wife and son descended the lower levels of the river, I turned around and walked back up towards the direction I sensed it came from. I surveyed the formations on my left and my right about 30 feet above me from where I was standing. I received a very strong impression of a presence, but could not see the see anyone. I sensed some strong emotions projected towards me and knew what was out there. I immediately resorted to what I know to be truth and said, you know that Yahshua is soon to return and take us home. And then I paused. As I sensed disturbance, I proceeded to say, I will be forced with my family to flee to the mountains away from the city folk as they force us to start keeping the devil's holy day Sunday. I hope you will welcome us. Now, what's really amazing is there were about 10 or so cars parked along the trails, as many desperate beings walked about a mile up the trails to the waterfall. The forest was sharp uphill and dense. At first I thought it may be people scattered about, but they were not there. Most of the visitors went to see the falls, and it was a good 20 minute walk uphill towards my eight. As I closed my last words, I sensed relief and it was silent. We ended up visiting the same place several times, and they let me know they were there. The feeling was as if, they were, as if we were being guarded. I felt as secure as when my father took me and my brother to a very wild waterfall 
200 feet high, and we were scared of the giant rocks and caves. But every time we looked at Dad, we were okay. My first experience, I don't think of them as stories, they are my testimonies. Many years ago, it took place in the high mountains of Europe, Germany. I was young, in my early teens at 68, playing in the lush, plush jungles of the forest in the mountains, totally isolated from people. Some of the foliage of the forest floor was so huge, I could hide behind one leaf and you would never find me. It was the soft and fluffy furry leaves we used, to, we used for special cleanup reasons. My father and my brother were the only ones for many miles around. We spent all day picking the, picking the chicken off the forest floor, making sure it was not poisonous. Picking the chicken. That must be like it. We were looking forward to making an awesome meal. My brother and I would be playing hide and seek and other innocent ways of passing time. We just escaped from communism, so the freedom was unbelievable. It was like a fairy tale. The sun set and we had a full moon. I was completely mesmerized by these little bugs that would light up to fill the whole forest. We don't have much, have such things in the city slums where I grew up. It was amazing. The light of the moon was like I had a lantern above my head. We were so close to the moon I could almost touch it. The forest were either fully light, lighted up or absolutely pitch dark depending on the foliage of the surrounding area. And in the dark parts, these cool little bugs like millions of eyes staring back at you. I learned why they called it Black Forest. I found myself alone, not knowing that my brother and father had already headed back to the car, parked on the hillside on a narrow horse and buggy trail, where each track was so deep I could hide in it. The mud tracks dried so deep. My father drove up the right side of the mud track on the grass, and the forest was on the left and right of the buggy tracks for 100 feet of grassy flatlands. So here I am enjoying myself playing in the forest. As I took a step, I heard someone sink with me. At first, I thought it was my father because I fully felt safe, and my sixth sense was telling me, don't worry, I'm here. I was so close to my dad that he did not have to say what he wanted. He just looked at us, and we knew what to do. It freaked friends and family out because they could not figure it out. How three boys and a girl just simply knew what the father wanted and the children just did it without hesitation. My father raised us with this secret code to protect us from evil we were living with. So I was safe. I sensed a presence as if it was my dad hiding and testing me and as I started running in a direction I could distinctly hear him matching all my steps to the T. As I would change direction it would follow me. And I was laughing my head off like a kid having fun. I yelled out, I can hear you, Dad, I can hear you. Could not figure out he could, how he could run in the dark like I, was, like I was in the light. My dad was superhuman, so I was fine. But every time I stopped, the steps stopped. It was like my footsteps were echoing themselves. I received a response of joy, but no laughter out loud. Only in my heart did I hear him. I felt like a young one. I felt like a young one, like me, and we were having a lot of fun. As we were playing around, he stepped into the light of the moon and saw a glimpse of what I would now describe as a young, scruffy, thin, but unusually tall and very fit, buff is the term used today, little child with long, pure white hair, blue-eyed, which glowed like the fireflies. And the long white hair was his clothes. The white hair was like the polar bear's white long hair. It was really awesome looking. What was strange that now that I saw him, I sensed a very strong authoritative presence as if it was my dad. This was puzzling to me. As I was dealing with these emotions, time seemed to have stopped. In a perfect slow motion, I saw him reach up to his left into the darkness of the forest and grab hold of an enormous hand. I was assured it was his dad's hand. His dad moved into the moonlight very slowly as if to make sure he did not scare me. We had no TV and we did not go to the movies. In communism, we were happy to have good food on the table. So we did not receive the monster in your room brainwashing. At least I did not. I was frozen. His dad was almost as tall as the trees around me. His shoulder was twice as wide as the trunk of the trees around us. And the trunk of the trees were so wide that three adult males, my father and his friends, could not, were not able to join their hands around these trees. We frequently visited the location because of the total isolation. We just escaped from communism, so it was incredible. True freedom. 
I suddenly felt like I was one of those little fireflies. I thought he was the coolest guy I ever met. They got absorbed by the forest again, and we kept on playing. But I never saw him again. It was like he wanted to show himself and test my reactions. I liked him, so it was a mutual joyous time. Now I knew why I did not feel like my father's mental guidance, but I was not frightened in any way because his dad was there, so we were safe. At this point, I realized I was totally disoriented and lost for sure. Nothing around me looked familiar at all, and now I sensed I was too far from my dad and brother. As I pondered this, I had no time to continue thinking about the, oh no, I'm lost part, or I received instructions where to go. It's all happening as the sixth sense was kicking in. I was led through pitch black forest where I could not see ahead of me, and yet the directions were perfect. I distinctly remember putting both of my hands out like a blind man feeling in the air for something to run into. But the voice calmed me and I was able to rapidly, running at a slow place, pace, surprisingly so, moving forward, and almost as if I could see in the dark. Then I heard a goodbye. I had fun, thanks. Now go to your dad, they are waiting. I did not question. As I collected myself, I found myself right at the clearing where the car was, still parked in the same place, and my dad and brother were sitting in there patiently as if I was right behind them. I showed up there at least an hour after they left me. As I sat in the car, they thought I was right behind them and were not anxious because I was making them wait for an hour. In those days, there were no D.I.G.I. brains to occupy your thoughts or time, so I was very odd they did not miss me. I asked my dad if he had fun following me in the forest, and he said he had a great time picking with us. I told him how I was able to play in the pitch black and there was a young boy matching my steps. He just laughed and said, glad you had a good time, and that was the end of it. I was calmed to not, pers I was calmed to not pursue it further. It was so much fun, I wish I could do it again. Following this, the what and why, the truth. Most will reject it because of massive generational programming. I love your rants. It is so pure and real. I'm guilty of the same. So I'm going to rant a little now, okay? Allow me to elaborate. I'm well over 65, and my first event is as real as if it just happened yesterday. I can still see their forums and glowing eyes calming me, like a noble king playing with his noble young prince, being trained in ways of life. I had a lot of fun. It was an extremely good time. No fears or danger. What is really gut-wrenching is that these recluse, once isolated humans, are now hunted. And it's okay because we fear them? Yes, some of them are fed up and angry, like all the world is today. The color of your skin makes others angry, ready to kill you. I can see the reasons they might have. This is what happened to the Australian natives, the Aborigines, and all the native tribes of the Americas, North and South, because of their appearance, wide nose, and so on. Fear drove the city educated humans to slaughter those native tribes. His history is simply repeating itself right under our noses. Because of Cain, this is what is happening to all human races, not restricted to race or color. Now to be fair, Steve, you're also a mountain man, as they are. This reveals your wisdom in life, and I mean this as the highest of compliments. You repeatedly ask, why are we not taught about these beings as children? Why not ask this question? We are being taught as children Darwinism and Big Bang. And if you oppose these school curriculum, you are the enemy of the state, no worse, humanity. The Communist Party will kill you for not believing in this origin of man. Christians, like Jews, are still jailed, tortured, and murdered for refusing to believe in this. We must understand children are the focus of the educational system. They are programmed, they are programmed with this. It is the herd mentality. This programming purposely leads you away from the truth. This is how they create the goyim, which means cattle, human herds, or is now prevalent on the big screen, zombies. Yes, that's right, 90% of humanity is just a herd of cattle slash zombies. Because no one asks a question, just follows the herd. And in every zombie movie, the diseased ones are slaughtered without mercy because they are a threat to the... I better shop here. You get my drift? This is all we are to the devil and his co-workers, which are made up of humans and the multi-dimensional beings who are able to manipulate all frequencies around you to appear to you as whatever your mind is susceptible to. Your mind will be shaped by your education and environment. There is many variations of different elements, apparitions, 
as there are human beings. The focus of the enemy is the weakness of the mind of an individual. These beings are the ones who are able to appear as your dead father or mother, or anyone they can use to get your will. And the reason they appear to you as lost loved ones, and they know secrets only you and the one in the grave knew, and no one else, you know, are convinced it's the relative for sure. Now they got you because they were unseen, invisible, present at your sacred event. They'll even mimic the exact tone of voice, the smell and everything. Because you don't know the truth, they can manipulate you to believe a lie. These beings are shapeshifters, time travelers, portal openers, and they will do everything needed to convince you of the lie. They will assume any form necessary to alter your decision-making abilities in their favor. There, there are many of these angels, spirits, hosts, demons, in many other forms, and most people refuse to accept this because it's just a movie script. It's not real. I saw that in my favorite game. Yes, it's just another zombie movie. The very existence and forceful involvement of these fallen beings show no, rather prove, that there is a creation by intelligent design and we do not evolve from apes. Creation or monkey business is what our world is about. Like my title states, it really is monkey business. Having said that, it begs the question, who is behind all of this? These supernatural beings known as evil angels can change the atmosphere around you so that you can see your breath as if you were in a walk in the freezer. They intimidate you with all your senses to get your will smell, taste, sound, skin, feeling, goosebumps, and so on. I was a witness to such possession of a Portuguese woman. She was a four-foot little lady who was a medium for years, but she was determined to break free from the possession. Very important, very important point here. She was determined to break free. It is the human will that is under attack. They must have your will at all costs, otherwise they lose. If they can keep you in fear or using dead family members to convince you of how real this lie is, then they have your will. Because you will believe them as a result of not questioning everything. By the way, she is free and they can't touch her. They cannot force us against our will. We have to be lied to. And as we give in to these lies, they start taking over. This is why we must question everything and not just follow anything. The world is educated to believe these are aliens, UFOs. This is what they start teaching all humans from kindergarten on. Most, however, unfortunately drink the Kool-Aid. It is more obvious now than ever before. This is why we hear so many different events, disappearing ones and all their apparitions, holographic appearances, invisible beings, colorful lights and UFOs of all kinds and sizes. Chrome balls the size of your thumbnail flying next to a jet. This chrome sphere was two or three times the size of the jet. I saw this with my own eyes, as a silver ball passed a jet, leaving a contrail behind it at around 30 to 35,000 feet, at extreme high speeds, as if the jet was standing still. The scriptures hint that there are many other created beings, therefore many other galaxies, other solar systems. However, these beings are not ant-men or the millions of movie depictions, creatures that seem to be part, part deformed humans. But these created beings are noble human beings who can see our struggle against the darkness, and they want nothing to do with it. No, they do not come to visit in spaceships. All the alien depictions you see are a satanic variation of deforming the noble human form for the purpose of destroying the image of the Creator. Because we are created in this image, they are experts at al amalgam, amalgam al amalgamism gene splicing, and other things we dare not or can't even imagine. This is how we have greys, the reptilians, and the dogman, werewolf of the old days, and the dogman of today. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of deformed th beings by the hands of these aliens. They do all this under the guise they are here to help us to save our planet, because theirs was destroyed and they had to move to a new planet. The lie strengthens. Strengthens. So what is the truth? As you as, as well many others ask, why are we being lied to? Who are the Dark Ones? I think I've shown this clearly so far. Let me elaborate a little more. The Dark Ones, just to be clear, the Dark Ones is, is a descriptive term of the evil ones and is not attached to skin color, are using color because to them only one life matters, their own. They use this weakness of humanity to set us 
against each other because we, humans in general, with the exception of the wise ones, who did not fall for the programming, are easily angered by anything and everything. A great example is all the road rage on YouTube that is a global event because this is what we're programmed to be. Just like with the city dwellers I call Lilliputians, there are good and bad. So also, with all life on this planet, there are good animals and there are really bad animals. There are good humans and there are really bad humans. This includes the forest dwellers. Just pray you meet the good ones and know how to deal wisely with the bad ones. This also proves that creation equals life, bad equals murder, death, and Satan. Yes, there is a global power in control and does not want you to know the truth. So the honest truth is unbelievable. May be even called a conspiracy theory, and the lie has become the truth. It now appears that certain elements of humanity are now afraid of the ancient giants of humanity who preferred to live outside the perimeters, laws, rules, and borders of filthy humanity. Now they have been targeted by the fearful Lilliputians. Let me shed a little light on the real story of the Nephilim. Ask, what is the origin of this word? This word has been adjusted, redefined, reinterpreted, interpreted, to suit the mystics whose purpose in life is to hide the truth, lie, and kill. They are the minions of Satan. This word has been purposely redefined by society's dark ones. The original meaning of this word is hero or brave like a hunter. These meanings were reworked to mean demons or evil angels, giants, as a result of evil angels having sex with humans. Quoting Vladimir Lenin, a lie told enough becomes the truth. You can sell more books, make more dollars. Another similar word, gay, which in the 1920s simply meant happy. Just to show how big the lie is, here's a wiki sample. Gibberim, from the singular, oh, there's some Hebrew spelling, gibor, is a Hebrew word that can be glossed, mightiest, which is an intensive, which is an intensive for gabar, that can be glossed, mighty. Many times it is used of people who are valiant, mighty, or of great stature. There is some confusion about gibberim, as a class of beings because of its use in Genesis 6-4, which describes the Nephilim as mighty Gibberim. The word Gibberim is used in the Tanakh, T-A-N-A-K-H, over 150 times and applied to men as well lions, Proverbs 30-30, hunters, Genesis 10-9, soldiers, Jeremiah 51-30, and leaders, Daniel 11-3. In modern Hebrew, the word Gibar is the singular Singular form of gibberim equates with hero, if noun, or brave, if adjective. I will only use this scripture to show how translations were altered to suit the lie. All we need to do is read the same scripture in different versions. Here's an example. Genesis 6-4, Young's literal translation of 1898. For the fallen ones were in the earth in those days, and even afterwards, when sons of God came unto daughters of men, and they have born to them. They are the heroes who. You gotta love it when somebody flashes up the dirt bike and just takes it up and down the short little chunk of road nonstop instead of going to the gravel road, which is just over here, and <laughs> going off for a burn, right? When sons of God come in unto daughters of men, they have born to them. They are the heroes who, from of old, are the men of name. As you can see, mighty men of old are not fallen angels, as the book of Enoch, the son of Cain, the murderer, teaches. They were brave, noble hunters who are famous because they were brave and noble. Please keep in mind that the book of Enoch, that the whole world is now swallowing hook, line, and sinker, is not the good guy, but the son of the first murderer, Cain. The lie strengthens yet again. There are two camps of beings involved. The one camp, first and foremost, is the creators, the father and his son who made all things. The second camp is the dark ones, the fallen, the rebellious Satan, who rebelled against the creator decided to kill him so he could be the almighty. Satan and all the fallen angels are timeless created beings. These fallen individuals are not restricted by time, space, or dimensions as we are. They know they lost the war. 
So now they go after us, unassuming and innocent humans who can be made to believe anything. What is the lie? That the Son of God does not exist because we came from monkeys. This way they can murder what is left. However, they're extremely angry because they are now bound to this earth and they can't leave from here till they are burned up. So they know this. So imagine their rage and hate towards us. They're able to destroy us because of their powers. So why do they only destroy some and not all? Here is the good side to all this. You see these so-called supernatural beings are not able to just destroy all peoples as they wish they could because the Father and Son sent their own good guys to protect us all. As we are attacked by these evil beings, definitely alien to all, we also have supernatural protectors available to us. There are volumes of events of these protectors being active in the lives of humans. So here's how it all adds up. We the Lilliputians are humans. Our ancestors, the giants, are also humans. And we come in many different colors, sizes, and shapes. Everything other than us real people, the giants and us city dwellers is of the supernatural, forceful, and murderous one whose leader is known and identified as Satan. And you know, and you, Steve, called him by the right name, right title, Devil. He is the father of lies and a murderer. These beings are very real and they lie about their appearance and abilities. Look at hell. Look at hell, boy. As long as a properly programmed robots believe the devil has hooves and is red with horns, he is laughing at you. As he moves in for the kill, it's the ultimate distraction. And because they are not ruled by time, they were created to live forever. They manifest fear into the minds of humanity depending on the victim's weaknesses. The giants of today, the forest dwellers, are mountain peoples who want nothing to do with the fallen city dwellers. As I said earlier, like you, a mountain man who wants nothing to do with today's city environment for obvious reasons. I'll not call the mountain peoples by their foot size, but for their abilities and wisdom. I applaud their abilities to stay away from filthy Lilliputian society, full of drugs, murders, rapes, human trafficking, sex slavery of children, and all kind of evil you can't even imagine. I call them smart, because these human beings rather live away from today's societal disease and death makes them enemies, monsters, hairy monsters, animals. Yes, they can be killed. Only the supernaturally possessed evil ones will rampage and kill. They are not the protectors of the forest. They are simple humans in trouble, and they know it. We are fallen. What we've fallen from is the question. We have fallen from the Creator's way of life. We have fallen from being giants in light. Another truth that is being covered up by the Dark Ones is that our ancestors were all giants. If we compare them from the past to us today, we are more like grasshoppers if we were to stand next to them. You can see the numerous giant skeletal remains covered up by the Dark Powers. The height was 18 feet up to 35 feet. By the way to discredit the existence of giants, the Dark Ones now are hiring artists to create false archaeological dig sites. Pretty nasty, right? Just one archaeological proof that was destroyed by the evil forces is the grave of Noah. Yes, we have the location of the ark and Noah's house. And the stone coffin where Noah and his wife were laid to rest. The sarcophagus of his wife was around 18 feet tall. And he was 950 years old when he died. Let that sink in. We still have the remains of the place he was laid to rest. Grave robbers and the evil, money-hungry grave robbers looted and destroyed most of the proof. Grave robbers stole the gold and gemstones Noah's wife was wearing and sold it on the black market for over $100 million in 1984. They came back later, destroyed the house also, looking for more gold. This is the job of the Dark Ones. They can't afford for the world to know that the Flood was a real event because that would make the Bible truth and destroy the Big Bang with a bang. The ruins are still there. This is the truth not monkey business. There is lots of information available to prove this. The lie still grows. The first recluse, or mountain man, was the one not willing to submit himself to the purest form of evil. The bloodline of the first human was split in two lines. One called the children of God and the other the fallen rebels. Children of the murderer Cain. These were the children of men. One of the children of God was Enoch, a descendant of the first man, the seventh from Adam. 
those who followed the teachings of life and power, are the ones that were called the children of God. Why? Because they obeyed God. These are the ones that stayed faithful to the Creator, decided to move out into the mountains and forests to stay away from the murderers. Of the fallen humans, children of Cain, like his son Enoch, who rebelled and wrote a mystical story dictated by Satan to lead generations to their death. This rebellious humans, these rebellious humans built fortified cities for themselves. This, as the result of their uncontrollable fears slash guilt, thinking they are safe behind the walls they built. And by the way, all lies are insurmountable walls. The leader of these city builders was Enoch, son of Cain, who wrote the book of Enoch. Everybody is so excited about it. This is the book that brings in fallen angels having sex with human women. This is where this, the lie strengthens. This book turns the word Nephilim into a mystical, unexplained secret. It's a lie. The children of Cain were the makers of statues of gold, silver, and other rare elements so they can have their own gods. See how society still resolve, revolves around those same elements today. These are the spinal cord of today's democratic freedom fighters. And they all drink Kool-Aid. I'm sorry, they make Kool-Aid. The wise ones lived in secluded and isolated locations to protect their children from the influences of the city people. They maintained an extremely high IQ and all their other capabilities were created with, they were created with, they perfected. But they are subject to decay and running out of territory because they are only human. This is why they are also subject to the evil ones and will be possessed if they are not careful because they are only human. They improved on all levels, but now become elusive to stay away from the dark ones. These purely evil humans, led on by the father of lies, the devil as you called him, were washed away from the devil atroc for the evil atrocities they had lived by. It was the flood. There's fiscal proof of the flood, and it's not millions of years either. That is the brainwashing program, monkey business, remember? So there are ways So there are always just two camps, the good guys and the bad guys. It seems this is still very real in today's world. Total respect to the military personnel who are willing to share. In your video posted as military stocked at Fort Lewis, Washington, again April 6, 2021, this experience is a real world event, not a sci-fi. This is the real world, which proves there are no parallel universe, universes. It's all an illusion to maintain the hypnosis of the globe's population. This is the interference of the devil whose only mission in his remaining little lifetime is to kill everything. But he can't. These ideas were implanted as the monster ideology from childhood so you will not see the truth. The soldier fully explained the technique of stealth. That is what they have. Thousands of years of experience combined. As I see things, we still don't know the lifespan of these forest peoples. This is what makes these humans an elite force beyond our imaginings. This is why we have a couple of sides fighting for these human beings. There are those who sympathize with the territory and respectfully create national parks and reserves to protect them. And it's kept a secret because of fear. They don't know how the global populace would react. This is, this is a mistake on their part. We know how stupid the masses are when you can create a global lie and the world falls for it. The Mount St. Helens experience where interpreters were working with the forest people to gather the remains of their lost ones. They're trying to aid as much as possible in this shrinking territorial devastating battle. Then there are others who need to collect samples to perfect in the lab the super soldier ideology. These evil humans cooperating with the fallen ones manipulate the human genome that results in Wolfman and all the other beastly things I mentioned earlier. He's the ones in it for money and power, the servants of death, who are hunting the forest peoples. These are the ones who will do everything to prove we are monkeys. These are the Darwinists who need to kill the aboriginal ape-like men and women of Australia for more territory. Just like here in America, killing the indigenous peoples got them more land, right? So there is good and there is bad. This is the basis of society today. As you see, there is a creator, is the creator of life, which is good, and there is the murderer of the created, of the created, the bad ones. It is this simple. The question is, whom do we believe, the good or the bad? Even more, whom do we follow? 
We have been programmed to know and believe in extraterrestrial existences. I wonder if these extraterrestrials evolve from apes also. These are the bad ones that teach the lie. That there is no creator, but you are the ancestor of apes. This way you will not believe the truth. Creation was proven by scientists, and these humans who dared to do so were taken to the court of the Darwinists, lost their scientific credibility after being famous scientists for many years. Research Dr. Robert Gentry. Radio Polonium Harlow. Halos. Radio. Okay, sorry. Radio dash Polonium Halos. There's a lot more behind this, but it's hard to swallow already. Everyone is afraid of the truth. This is why they murdered an innocent human being who was guilty of performing miracles, of healing and giving life back to the dead. Whoa. Those who follow the truth are treated the same way. It is really noble of you to take such risks with your life to bring into light the existence of a race of humans who don't care to be controlled by our rules. Because of the supernatural involvement, many think, based on their lying and deception of these demons, that they can read minds. Not so. They are not allowed by the Creator to do that. This is extremely, this is an extremely long conversation. So I'll just mention one example. Mind talk slash mind speak is projection of thought on a specific frequency that is not audible. They are able to whisper in your ear on such a frequency that you think it was your thought. You must remember, they are on another frequency slash dimension and you cannot see them, only feel the change of the frequencies around you which translates into emotions. But they need to be very stealth so you cannot detect them. So, they are right next to you whispering in your ear. Here's something that works. When you are struggling with some thoughts you can't control, just plug your ears for a few minutes and see how the thoughts disappear. It's a very simple test. Excuse me. Here's an example of what we are capable of as just ordinary humans. When I got married to a strong woman, I did not know and we had to grow together. To grow together, you must be in agreement. We were together for six months now. She was working in downtown Manhattan in the old Pan Am building on the top floor. I was in Jackson Heights about 40 minutes inland towards Long Island. I had a thought that I needed to call her. Landline dial phone. I picked up my phone and there was no dial tone, but I heard someone breathing. I asked, is someone here? There? And my wife replied, yes honey, how did you call me? There was no dial tone. She told me she was moved to call me, but there was no dial tone. She was about to hang up. This is a combination of being on the same frequency. Call it whatever you need to, but realize we as humans were programmed out of our abilities, of this great intellect by the Dark Ones. We have been programmed since children to naturally oppose, not resist the truth of all things. It comes naturally now and we think we are right. They will possess the weak minds by force. They want you to believe. They can read minds. They can't. They're afraid of you. This is why generations of programming convince all humans that they can read your mind. Sorry to burst their bubble. No, I'm a free being and no, I won't let you. No, I'm a free being and no, I won't let you. Who do you think has been training psychological warfare, specialists in body language, and there is far more on this front also? When you see a magician literally walk on water, you just don't see the demons carrying him. After all, Jesus was a man and he walked on the water, right? So, it's no big deal. Sorry, I rambled on there for a while. In closing, I sympathize with the loss of your best friend. I had saved a Canadian Grey when he was a pup. Real timber friend. His whole family, nine pups, mom and dad, were ordered by the RCMP to be terminated by a next door farmer who was raising them for profit. My friend was the last one the farmer let loose and was crying as he performed the deed. And that was the last great gun blast. I dove on the pup split second before it became terminal. And we have both landed head first in the ditch. This saved us from certain death. I felt the outer fringes of the pellets obliterate the field above my head. As we lay in the ditch shaking from fear, the farmer, who was an expert marksman, a collector of weapons old and new, who possessed more weapons and ammo from around the world than the local cop shop, he was a specialist who built his own ammo, and ammo for weapons no longer in existence, handmade. At that time, he was respected. Now he'd be jailed. 
He had some very heavy choice words to say to me. Yes, it was all four letters, even in our language, between sobbing like a child and being shocked that he almost killed the son of his best friend. He was in angry shock. And there's nothing worse than a wartime hero to reach this stage in his life. I will skip all that. This was the essence of it. He told me because I risked my life to save him, it was divine intervention, because he never missed in the 60 years he'd been at it. He said to take this husky dog and protect him. So we grew, we grew up together. He's my best husky friend for many years. Many great stories there also. The Creator established me as the Alpha in his life and all was beautiful. I also had pet hawks and 30 cats. <laughs> they all roamed free. It was beautiful. By the time they, by the time, but the time come to say goodbye and move on. Remember the good days and let it lift you up. Now you have a new best friend who makes you a sandwich. Total respect to our memories and good times we shared with the animals the Creator provided for us to lift us up with peace and joy. Wishing you, wishing you and yours all the best, waiting for the man cave to be up. Thank you for the ears, Steve. It removes the fear. Sorry, I couldn't help myself to just be a little punny. I'm just nobody. You are the only one privileged for my personal info, so if you need to contact me, feel free. This will shake the tree, and many bad things will fall out. And there is a share. Of course, I'll keep your name and your email private. And everything you say sure gets the wheels spinning, doesn't it? A lot of that I can absolutely relate to. Absolutely. The big lies. The big lies. There's so many big lies going on in mainstream society today, it's absolutely mind-boggling. And it's frustrating. Uh, I think the most frustrating part for me is watching the human herd taking in those Kool-Aid shots daily and not even thinking twice about it. It's so frustrating to me. We're getting uh, examples of being lied to and misled, slapped in our faces non-stop. But the majority of human beings just sit there with their mouth open their eyes glazed over. And they don't even know how to react. They don't even know what to do. There's just nothing there. It's like you said, basically like zombies, right? Basically like zombies. And that's why I get, for me, that's an example of my frustration, which people can and do take as insulting, is when I always say from day one, <laughs> this, this topic right here is one of the easiest ones to deliver to the people that we're being lied to and misled. And how can you just stay stuck on that one topic when it opens up all the other doors? It's the same as the flat earth thing that insulted so many people last week. I don't give a shit about the earth, shape, it works, it's a beautiful place. What I'm saying is, if, if everybody, all these people, not just flat earth or Sasquatch or many other things, so many people see examples that convince them, without a doubt, that they're being misled and lied to since day one. Perfect, that's perfect. Keep going. That's what I'm saying to everybody, all and everyone. Keep going. Don't stay stuck on flat earth. You don't need a flat earth army. You need an army of people who are willing to buck the system and go for the truth and fight. Not just stay there lashing out at other fellow human beings because they don't accept... Don't accept they're not supposed to be saying the word globe. <laughs> right? Bust free and move forward. Go farther than just right there. It's like the people who are who are stay obsessed with just Sasquatch. Just Sasquatch and banging on trees and footprints and dermal ridges. 20, 30 years later, they're still banging on trees and whooping in the night and focused on footprints and dermal ridges. And then they're dead. <laughs> and and they, didn't, they didn't create that big frickin' army of gathering all the truths and fighting the evil, fighting the dark side. They stayed there. They're easily manipulated to stay there. It's frustrating to watch, right? But in the meantime, we keep sharing everybody's words. We keep letting every human speak, all right? And we leave it up to every single human to hear every single human, and we leave it up to all of you to take from what you will or leave it. You be the judge. You listen. You'll know. We all have the answers already. I'm 100% convinced we got the answers to every question that's inside of us. But, like I've said way before this email, 
as far as I'm concerned, our natural, true given natural skills and abilities have been rubbed out of us in a system since we were pried from our parents' arms around the way. Five. It all made us sick to leave that house and go into that school system. It all hurt. It all made us upset. We didn't want to go. It was our intuition or sixth sense of probably telling us that it wasn't going to be a good thing. Possibly. Prove me I'm wrong. Look into it. Possibly. I don't know. Right, one thing. We do not we do not practice the abilities and skills that we're naturally given. No more. I'll bet you that's true. 